Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. We back. Back yet again, week after week. We back. I'm going to let y'all know right now I'm taking two months off in January and February. So you might, it might be some verbal cardio missing for about two months, but you know, I need it. Water, co host of the decade, man. The best co host in your life. You know what I'm saying? You want better insides, drink water. You want better outsides, drink water. Water is for your outsides and your insides. And it's for your house. And it's for your garden. It's for everything, man. It's for your car. You know, clean your car, clean your vehicle. It's literally the fuel for you to stay alive, man. Get in on it, man. Cherish it, hold it, drink it, caress it. Don't be hiding your water intake under fruity drinks and alcohol and bullshit and coffee. Just drink water straight up, man. Get it in your life. I want everybody listening to this, watching this right now, to be drinking water right now. Grab your bottles. Get your cups together. Open that up, man. If I motivate you to drink more water in your life, my work here is done. Everything else is just the cherry on top, man. It's just the, the vanilla wafer sprinkles on top of an already bomb dessert. And do you like vanilla wafers on your banana pudding? That's what me and Ju was talking about, man. Juju. Vanilla oh, wafers bestie. on the banana pudding. Man, good times. Um, Got my producer extraordinaire in here, Sabrina. Yeah. Back in business. Yes, Got sir. a mirror on the ones and twos, man. Um, I want to say rest in peace to take off right out the gate. Uh, you know, much love and prayers and strength and compassion to take off and his family, his his Migos, you know, family and abroad. I'm not sure if he had children or whatever, but it don't even matter, man. His whole family team, um, I'm sorry for your loss. If anybody that's attached to Migos is even watching this, man, I'm sorry for your loss. And it's tragic, man. And, and you know, in Houston, Texas, he lost his life. And I've been hearing all kind of different things. I don't want to speculate on nothing because I don't want to be sitting up here with the wrong information. But we do know that he passed. That's the definite. And it's unfortunate. It's unnecessary. It's tragic. It's hurtful. It's real. And, you know, in Houston, Texas, we, we were just in Houston. Like, literally, we left Houston Sunday morning. Uh, me, Brandon, and Keenan Baker was just out there. Um, another comedian from there, Billy Sorrells, was telling us it's dangerous in Houston. And I feel like every big city is dangerous. Um, I feel like when you got a lot of people living somewhere, it's a lot of danger. And he was telling us, if you go to the strip club, man, you know what I'm saying, you have somebody, which I can bring a pistol. Everybody got pistols in Texas. Everybody's strapped in Texas. And, you know, we went to the strip club and um, we were just there for a little bit. I feel like we were there for a little I ordered a fruit platter at the strip club. <laughs> I just want people to know <laughs> that I might lose credibility on the streets, you know. But I was like, yeah, let me get the fruit platter. And, uh, and one of the dancers was like, that's what I get. And I was like, yeah, I got a fruit platter. If I was butt-ass naked for a work shift, I'm not eating heavy. So I get if they were like, yo, I just get the fruit platter because, you know what I'm saying? Because if you sit there and eat some sandwiches, wings, whatever, and you walking around butt-ass naked, because, you know, after you eat, you feel you feel bloated, you know what I'm saying? Your stomach's a little bigger. It looked like you ate. If I was butt-ass naked for a living and I'm walking around, I would have to make sure I slept before my work shift, like a full, a full sleep. Because, you know, when you wake up, that's when your stomach is at its most flat. And so I would have to be like, yeah, I slept about six hours. Now I'm in here, butt ass naked. And the, so we went, we went to the strip club in uh, Houston, and uh, got hemmed up by the same dancer though. That's what sucks. That's what sucks, man. It was just like, man, you know what I'm saying? It was it, we we got hemmed up, and it was just like, all right, man. She wouldn't leave. One thing about me at the strip club. I be feeling bad making making the dancers leave, telling them I'm good now. I be feeling bad, and I shouldn't. I should just be like, all right, man, enough. But I be feeling, I'll be like, man, you know what I'm saying? 
I don't know how to I don't know how to disengage even even when I want I want you gone. I want you gone. Don't 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 stick with me the whole night. But then I but I don't know how to <laughs> And then I know that there's other dancers. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, man, when you go to the strip club, you want a variety of dancers to dance for you. You don't want to just be him that will one. I'm not this romantic ass dude to be like only you. No, man. Variety. You don't need to be doing this. Yeah, like man, you know, you better than this. So how long did you get in the game, man? Get, you know, but I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get comfortable because I don't go to the strip clubs often. So I gotta get comfortable enough to be like, all right, man, skedaddle and <laughs> beat it, man. Watch out, man. There's other, there's other dancers here, man. Let's let's see what's going on. And so hemmed up the whole night. Then we left. We didn't stay that long. Uh, but I will say this: the fruit platter was great. I was gonna ask. Fruit platter was good. I had pineapple again though. I've been avoiding pineapple because of the gut, the gut check. Mm. Um, so I had pineapple, grapes, and uh was there melon? Yeah. I think it was a cantaloupe. Ooh. It might have been honeydew, actually. I've no. been having good honeydew lately. Look at you. And so, and they had a little side of whipped cream. So I had that. But man, the dancer would not leave. <laughs> Did she take some of your fruit? Nah, That'd she, be didn't. Mad she didn't. I offered. I was like, "You can get in on this." She was like, she was, "Nah." But I was just like, and then I ended up tipping the uh, the waitress. Mm-hmm. I tipped her a lot, and then I tipped the lady that goes to get your change. I tipped her as well. I could tell they were surprised. It was like, oh, oh. yeah, because just... usually they get it like at the end of the night. They get tipped out by the dancers. Yeah, so I was just, no, I'm giving it to y'all. Shout out to P-Valley. I know Direct. everything. I could be a stripper. <laughs> the full scoop. I know everything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I, I just gave what I had left to them. And I was just like, but, you know, in, in hindsight, the him up, we was pissed. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I'm going to get off here. I'm giving them a little bit more before we begin. Um, Yo, when we was at the strip club in Atlanta. Uh-huh. I like that. I like that one dancer, right? The first one, and yes. then and then here come B. Lou. Like no, you know, you could tell her to leave. I'm like, I want to tell her. I want to tell her to leave. Yeah. I like her. <laughs> that was you. You was the romantic. I was. You I was the romantic. The, you don't need to be doing this. <laughs> that was Sabrina. So <laughs> yeah. let me tell y'all the story about Sabrina at the strip club. <laughs> but I, I, I genuinely, I was like, yo, I like her because her body to me was dope. It was yeah. like super thick. The uh, other girls were like, they had body, but like. Mm-hmm. It wasn't thick enough for me. I yeah. was like, if I'm going to go to a strip club, I want it to be ridiculous. I want to question how you put on pants. <laughs> I want to I want to question everything. Yeah. Your whole life. Right. And the other girls was just not, I, it was, just wasn't questionable for me. But this girl was like, I was like, yeah. But the one you liked at the other strip club, she wasn't mad thick. Nah, but I'm, I'm just talking about the first strip club. Also, in your in your debut. Yeah, like I just liked her because out of everyone, she was my favorite you didn't every... even see all the dancers yet. Nah, you bro. immediately even... got hemmed up. I know, I like the. <laughs> you didn't even you didn't even look around to see who else was up in the building. It was love at first, but jiggle. <laughs> you and Zuli was spending the whole wad on one dance. Yeah, cause she she had it like that. Money was just flying out of the thing. And she then... was talking to me while she was shaking her butt. We have a normal conversation. She yeah. was like, yeah, girl. Uh-huh. I'm a Virgo too, shaking ass and shit. And I was like, okay, uh-huh. And I'm just looking at her ass. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you nothing else about it, but it was love at first. I don't twerk, even remember sure. that dance that y'all was throwing money at. I remember seeing her, but I was just like, eh. But um, so yeah, so so they just blowing the wide immediately on <laughs> dancer one. We we there twenty minutes. I'm like, yo, they are running out of the money already. The money, and it was just like it was ridiculous. And then so from there, I feel like we got better at distributing the cash throughout. But this 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 time this weekend in Houston, it was just like. The hem up was just, man. Yeah. It was just disappointing because we we got hemmed up. Oh, she yeah. watching this like <laughs> she got a sad face. <laughs> it was Aww. a good time, but you know what I'm saying? She know she was there too long. Was there too long the whole time. Man. Anyway, that was Houston. Uh, 
Um, Shout out to Houston, though. Be, uh, even though that happened. Um, I will say this about Houston. Houston pulled up. Yeah. They showed up, showed out. The third most tickets sold for a weekend ever for me was in Houston. Houston wow. is now ranked at number three. Um, they came to every show. The energy was great. The only the only bad energy was the first Saturday show. The energy was good, but it was just they were the weakest energy wise for the whole weekend. Saturday first show, but everybody, all the other shows were fantastic. The staff was great. They put us in a great hotel. Um, I got zero complaints about Houston, man. I will pull up on y'all anytime with with excitement and anticipation and. It was a great weekend. So shout out to Houston. Thank y'all so much for the support. It means everything. It means everything. So um, I appreciate it. Y'all were buying merch. Y'all pulled up. You laughed. You brought the energy. I ain't got a bad thing to say about Houston, except that it's far. Everything's far in Houston. Everything's a drive. But Houston is just big, and it's not your fault. You're big for a reason because it's dope. And it rained super hard for one day. And Zuli just came up in this live. Zuli, remember y'all was wasting all the money on one dance at the strip club in Atlanta? Hey, man. You remember that, Zuli? <laughs> you remember <laughs> blowing the wad 15 minutes in? He was having a good time. Man. <laughs> Shout out to Zuli for coming to Atlanta on my birthday. It was a tough birthday. So talk it. about takeoff down. I already talked about takeoff down. All right, let me come late. up out of the yeah, IG live because y'all get annoying in here. But not y'all, but just people come in and try to tell me what to talk about, man. Shut up. All right. Boom. Pow. Um, so we out of here. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Houston, man. Y'all are fantastic, man. Taylor Swift. Girl. Taylor Swift has the number one album this week. Her album, Midnight's, just dropped. Shout out to Midnight the Cat. You know what I'm saying? I think she dedicated the album to my cat, Midnight. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. Sabrina be jealous because Midnight be all over me. Man, you know what I'm talking about? You feel me? But she, he be man. on you. Nah, but you know who? he? Yo, Dapper was on me. Tough. Like when I was mm -hmm. coming down the stairs, the the second set of stairs, yeah. you know how you, like, you can kind of like see when he's on the first set coming mm -hmm. down? He started doing this, like with his paw, like yeah. patting it up, uh -huh. trying to get my attention. And yeah. he kind of touched my head, and I look, and he's just dying for me to pet him uh -huh. with hands. With hands? With hands. Wow. This man was just dying to get my attention. Wow. To pet him with hands. Wow. If anybody knows Dapper, Dapper's Dapper is not, like not hands. a hands person. This man was, and then he is so funny because as I'm walking down the stairs, he's just trying to rub himself on me. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're going to kill me. <laughs> I'm trying to go down the stairs. And like, he was just on me, like aggressively on me. So I went to go check if he needed water, yeah. gave him water, still on me. Like it wasn't even about none of that. Yeah. He was just. They was locked up for a long time yesterday. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. I, I thought yeah. you were gone. <laughs> they was locked up for a while. I wonder if they noticed when we're gone. Yeah. Cause then when we come in, they hear us. They're like, <laughs> get us out of here. <laughs> I mean, gone for days. Oh, because my 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 dog, he used to like Nabisco. He used to yeah. hate. He hated suitcases. Yeah. When he would see suitcases, he'd be pissed <laughs> off. He would attack them. He would oh, bark at them. Going somewhere. Huh? Yeah. Pissing in your suitcase. He'd be so mad. He never pissed in a suitcase. Pissing in your suitcase. But, yeah, but Dapper pit, did. Pissed in my suitcase. <laughs> pissing in your suitcase. Man. Um, Taylor Swift, though, man. Her album, so 1.5 million, well, the equivalent. It's the equivalent, y'all. The equivalent, you know, streaming plus regular sales. 1.5 million debut week. Now, Amir is calling foul because he feels like, according to reports, she did over 500,000 vinyl-only transactions. That's so crazy. Vinyl-only in 2022. In 2022. When that is not the medium that we use to consume music right. anymore. So. I don't care if you're a collector or whatever. <laughs> 500, 575,000 vinyl sales only. So Amir is calling it, foul. I'm calling cap. Yeah. And on top of that, making it the the biggest 
sales week for a vinyl album for just anything ever sold on vinyl. Yeah. Like, period. is crazy. Yeah. Ever? Right. Today? In 2022? That's yeah. That is crazy to me. It's, it's quite the... Uh... It's quite the feat. It's questionable. And I, I don't check in with Taylor Swift music too much anyway. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, so I'll get that out the way. But Right. I'm not, I, I can't say that I'm a Taylor Swift fan either. Um, I'm not really in that. I don't be pulling up on Taylor Swift at all musically. Uh, but I know she's a force to be reckoned with out here when it comes to, when it comes to numbers. I'm going to read y'all the numbers she be doing out here. Taylor Swift. Her debut album. Fearless dropped in 08, November 08. It sold 592,000 copies first week. Now, that's super impressive for a debut artist to go gold first week. It's been done before, but it's always impressive to do those kind of numbers for your debut album. And she came out the gate with a number one album. So she has several number ones. She's got 11 in a row. So she come out the gate, gold in one week, Fearless. Second album drops October 31st, 2010. Speak Now. Moves over a million first week, uh, 1.04 million debut week, um, which is expected. If you do 500,000 copies first week, of course, you're going to up the ante on your second album more than likely. Kanye West did it. His uh, When he dropped College Dropout, it did uh, over 400,000 copies debut week which is super impressive. Late Registration comes out. It does over 800,000 debut week. So it happens. Graduation exceeded Late Registration debut week. It did over 900 some thousand copies on that uh, debut week. Anyway, so Taylor Swift drops her third album in 2012 in October. Yo, she is the October, November queen out here. All right, so October 28th, 2012, uh, 2012, she drops Red. Ed does 1.2 million debut week, all right? Next album, 1989, drops in 2014 in November. 1.2 million debut week, just a little bit over Red. 2017, she drops Reputation. It does 1.2 million debut week. August 29th, 2019, she, she done dipped out of uh, October and November for the first time. She drops Lover in August, does 867,000 copies debut week, which is a drop-off from what she's been doing, but still more than her debut. Then um, July 2020, she drops Folklore, 800 and some thousand copies first week. Then that same year, a couple months later in December, she drops Evermore, 329,000 first week. Then she re-releases her previously recorded Fearless album. She does a Taylor's version. Does 291,000 copies debut week. Next is same year. She drops Red. She redoes Red, Taylor's version. 605,000 copies debut week. And then this, this past week, she drops Midnight's. 1.578, 1.5 million debut week with all them vinyls sold. So it's just, these numbers that she's doing is just goddamn ridiculous. To have five albums debut over a million is just crazy. She is doing the numbers. Yo, her fan base is, is scary. Man. They're scary. If you like a lot of people, if you say or like say you tweet mm, Taylor Swift, right? Doesn't matter what it is, uh -huh. you'll have so much traction on that tweet because it's like they're looking for stuff for people said. to be to be talking about her. Shit, let me let me tweet about Taylor Swift. Tweet about tweet anything. Yeah. Be like, yo, I heard Taylor Swift like cheese, and people be like, no, she's lactose intolerant. This is why you're canceled. And be like, it's like oh the weirdest thing. And they're called the Swifties. The Swifties. Ah, okay. it's so weird. They're just like the Beehive, but like privileged. <laughs> that's but what it privileged? Feels, that's what it feels Hilarious. like. <laughs> it 
feels like a like they're it seem they seem a little more unhinged. Yeah. And it's just it's it's insane. Like me saying this right now, I'm scared for my life. Probably wow. you should probably edit like this out. That. You should edit this Anybody out. Anybody's scared of you. No, man, shut up. <laughs> they do not play though. They do not play about their Taylor Swift. Yeah. I I I will never Right. I ain't got nothing bad to say about the girl. She just be doing numbers because I don't really know enough about her. Yeah. Um. So you know, I. But I, I'm also you know I'll be watching numbers. So I just be looking at what she's doing out here, and it's it's incredible, and it's just crazy. And I'm like, wow, that's the kind of fan base you want, man. The bakery need to step it up. Oh, man. If the bakery was like the Swifties. I need y'all to start looking on Twitter. Who's talking about Tony Baker? Pull up. Be like, yeah. The bakery out. And then drop mad bread emojis. Come on, man. Come now, on, bakery. I will, I will say this about people that rock with me. They be having my back when people talk shit. That's true. That that is yeah, that, they there. They not they not here for the Tony Baker slander. Yeah, the, the comment section be on they high. not bullshit. Sometimes they, they overdo it and be like they be messing with my friends who oh, say yeah. a joke and then they be throwing them on the grill. So I definitely feel loved in that point. I want though <laughs> what I what I need from my base and I need to expand the base and I need to work harder is when I post a flyer. Oh I want that shit sold out in minutes. That that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I want it to be like I'll be in Cleveland and then boom, sold out, way in advance. That's that's the goal for me. So see, if the bakery were like the Swifties, what they would be doing, yeah, is that they would be reposting your flyers regardless oh. of where they live, mm. because they might know somebody or somebody might be following them based on where that mm-hmm. show is at. Yeah. So what I need the bakery to do is just just post it up in your story, right? Tweet it out. Yeah. Facebook. Who cares? Just put it out there. Come on, y'all. That's what I'm looking for as a whole, like, you know, a, a big enough fan base to where when I drop a new episode of Verbal Cardio or Daddy Issues or Gross Point Bake, the numbers are high. And then the ticket sales numbers are, you know what I'm saying, instant, instant rock out. I appreciate you, Jerome. I appreciate y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Y'all, be, y'all be having my back, though. I'll be seeing it. And I'll be like, man, y'all not having it. And I appreciate it. So I do have some some Swifties on the low. It's just a much smaller, you know. We we small but mighty. It's like ten people like, yeah, yeah. we're gonna charge yep. the castle. I got I got fifteen <laughs> ride or die. I love that. Bakery people that's just loyal as shit. And I appreciate y'all, man. Um I just found this out. Um, all these are good timestamps, by the way. Him to buy a stripper, the strip glove, fruit platter. Yes, yes, good times, good choices. I didn't know they were doing a Wonder Man series, so now I'm in my comic book nerd bag, which I, I still don't agree with. Comic book nerd title until nerd is across the board. I want to hear sports nerds being said. I want that. I want that to be the term instead of fan. Y'all always get fan. You never get nerd. And you sports heads are mad nerdy out here. And I want the language to reflect that. The stuff y'all know as sports fans is mad nerdy, mad numbers in there. Yeah, I've been following them since college and high school. We went to such and which grammar school. Shut up. Y'all are nerds. But y'all get the fan label. Y'all get y'all get called fans day and night. I don't think it's fair. But that's neither here nor there. I've already said that on here before, but you know what I'm saying? Now, they're making a Wonder Man series for Disney Plus. Here's my thing on Disney Plus shows. I'm not in love with Disney Plus shows. I wish Wonder Man was just going to be a proper movie. Um, I'm not in love with any any of the Disney Plus Marvel shows. So now that Wonder Man is coming, because honestly, I feel like the, the Disney Plus Marvel show has been too soft. They too soft on Disney Plus, man. I feel like they're aiming for the kids. So I'm just like, man, toughen up. Gritty it up. And not and not that, you know, the Avengers historically was gritty like that, but you know what I'm saying? It's just it's too pretty over there, man. It's too pretty and like, you know, it's 
Something ain't right over there on Disney Plus side of things with the Marvel shows. It's something that's not clicking with me. I'll be watching the shows. I'll be tuning in. It'd be, it'd be dope moments. But it's just something. Something is off. And I can't put my finger on it. And I still got to watch Werewolf by Night. So. But. Wonder Man, I feel like, is a dope character. Like, I really liked, I really liked Wonder Man before he turned into pure energy. I liked him better when he was, you know, a man that was resurrected with, he was a former villain who died, and they brought him back using the brain patterns of, uh, who? No, 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 they didn't use the brain patterns of anybody. They brought him back. Matter of fact, his brain patterns were, put into vision when they made vision they put the brain patterns of Stephen williams inside of vision's head so there is a connection with wonder man and vision that i don't know how they would i don't know how they would play that out in this scenario because vision already exists before wonder man but in the comic books they they made him to where simon williams simon williams my bad simon williams what i do like is that uh, Yaya will be playing Simon Williams. I like that. I'm all in. Um, this is another case of an actor going between DC and Marvel because he was uh, Black Manta in Aquaman, and now he's uh, Simon Williams in the MCU. I'm interested to see how they're going to do this show. Um, but I, I do feel like the Disney Plus show is a hit and miss. And even the ones that I do like, I'm still kind of liking them. Oh, he was Dr. Manhattan. Oh, yeah, he was. He was, uh, I was just talking about that because I was, um, Drew asked me who was my favorite superhero. Uh -huh. And, you know, naturally I say Nightcrawler first. Yeah. And then I said Dr. Manhattan. Right. I had no clue. And so I was educating them on the right. Watchmen, the original, mm -hmm. and then the series. Right. And yeah, I was trying to like. I forgot he was Dr. Yeah. Manhattan. So he's Dr. Manhattan, Black Man, and now he's about to be Wonder Man. He about to be out Sky's here. Sky's the limit, y'all. And he's Candyman. And he's Candyman. I was just going to say, he made, he's he been some epic character. He out here doing it. Shout out to Yakya. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really liked um, the Watchmen series. I liked... Um, I like the mo the movie as well. I love the movie actually. Um, I think the movie is underrated. Uh, a lot of people couldn't get with it, but it, it's faithful to the source material, and I think it was dope. I think it. There were a couple moments where Zack Snyder kind of lingered a little too long, but other than that, as far as the story, the execution, the casting, the action, I feel like it was dope. I feel like. I feel like it's it's Zack Snyder's best directorial on a comic book movie. It was so true. Yeah. It was literally like watching the pages come to life. Right. Like he really, cause that was like my favorite graphic novel for a long mm -hmm. time. And I remember I was so scared when it was going to come out. Like, right. Man, they, they might fuck this up. And they and stayed they, true. They stood true. The only thing that they took out was in, like in the graphic novel, there's a kid that's that like lingers around the newspaper. Oh yeah, thing. they took that out. Yeah, and they took out the comic within the comic, yeah. which was fine. It wasn't like I didn't need that. But the only reason that it was important in the comic book is because it kind of foreshadowed what was actually going to happen. Right. And so like like it was cool, but it wasn't necessary. Well, yeah. But the fact that that was the only thing, and they and they tweaked the end. Yeah, and the ending was instead of that yeah. big monster, it was just a bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made sense. Yeah. So other than that, it was... It was... Yo, Rorschach sounded yeah. and looked exactly how I imagined. Yeah. Like, I was like, yo, this is yep. fantastic. If y'all never seen The Watchmen, please. For some reason, I picture him whenever he said, hmm, in the comic book, though, I picture like, hmm. <laughs> I don't know why. Because <laughs> that's you. When I would read it, that's how it sounded to me when I would read it. Um Struggle Beer Bakery say y'all only like yeah yeah because of his wee wee. Hey yo, it has nothing to do with it for me. Sir? You know what I'm saying I don't need to see, you know, packages to be like I like this actor oh, right here. Hell? I like his package. Yeah, you know what his wee wee look like? Struggle yeah, because Doctor Manhattan was naked. 
is true. He was just walking around, package out. I didn't even really think of that. Yeah. The fact that I, I've watched it and mm-hmm. I've seen it, and you know me. You're right. You perv Griffin I'm, per, I'm the biggest pervert <laughs> ever. And I don't even, I, I, that's, how, that's how good that series was, though. Yeah. Because the storyline was great. It, it was good. I really like, are they coming back with it? I hope so. Me too, man. I'm so sick of them giving us great stuff, oh. especially black lead stuff. Oh, man. And then being like, ha, ha. HBO is killing us with the black layer stuff and not bringing it back. They did that with number one ladies detective agency. They did it with uh, Lovecraft Country Mm. and The Watchmen. So it's like, man, bro, you're killing us. Please. You're killing us. But I hope that Disney Plus steps it up on the series side of things. I would prefer Wonder Man be a theatrical release. That's my prefer. Um, but I, I'm excited about the casting and I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the story. I would prefer him not be all energy too, just yet. Maybe they can, they, they can do that later on, but I would prefer to see him just a, as a regular man. That's like super strong. Wonder Man is one of the strongest Marvel characters out. So I would just like to see like a strong cat out here, just slinging people around, serving them up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see, but Disney Plus, because She-Hulk, I'm sorry, I can't even, mm-hmm. I'm not even motivated to finish She-Hulk. I'm not motivated to finish Miss Marvel, um, and that says a lot. Because that's you, man. Come on, man, I'm Marvel. And so there's, there's an issue there. I just be feeling like after I watch a Marvel series on Disney Plus, I feel just like, mm, all right. Outside of WandaVision, which I feel like was the hardest hitting uh, Disney Plus series, in my opinion, outside of WandaVision, I haven't really held on to anything. I didn't like Loki like everybody else. Uh, The Winter Soldier and the Falcon was cool. It had had dope moments in there. And it had some stuff I probably will remember, like the the Dora Milaje fight in Falcon and the Winter Soldier was fire. Like It made me want to... See more of that from the Dora Milaje moving forward with the Black Panther franchise. Like, I want to see more fight scenes with them. Like, I love that fight scene with the Dora Milaje and the new, the U.S. agent Captain America and his sidekick in this small apartment. And it was going down and it was dope. And Ayo don't play, man. She she does not play. And I hope that she has a, a bigger role in Wakanda Forever. And I want to say this about Wakanda Forever. Since we since we last did our verbal cardio, um, Wakanda Forever had a premiere. And so, you know, a select few people have seen it. I've been on their necks. I was like, yo, was it good? They said it was dope. Um, they said the villain was dope. Um, I... Uh, I've heard that it was like a little bit slow in parts, but super dope and emotional and cathartic. The early reactions are really good, but I will say this. Usually early reactions are super good like that. So I don't, I don't, I don't put too much stock in that early, early reactions because I've seen early reactions of the Eternals. And they were like glowing and like super positive and like, you know what I'm saying? They were, they were, they were saying some great things. But then when it came out, when it came time for the critics to turn in their reviews, you saw that it was rated low, it was rotten, and then people were people were hot and cold on the uh, on the Eternals. So I don't get too excited about you know the early reaction. So we'll see. Um, but you know, I'll be in Wakanda forever opening weekend. That ain't gonna change. That ain't gonna change. Yeah, I just bought Zuli a ticket to come oh, the snap. same day. Yeah. So I'm excited. I got an outfit. I told you that. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited. Oh, me and Sabrina went to, uh, I said this on Daddy Issues, but we went to Halloween Horror Nights last night for Halloween at Universal Studios. So oh, we was in there with the with the monsters and the Michael Myers and the Scarecrows and the La Llorona's and the, you know, we was out here um, in the scary community. And what I was saying was, and you know, I know they were jam packed and they had a lot of people to, you know, sift through. But when you go through 
when you go through haunted houses, create space between you and the group in front of you if you're not all together. If you're all together, y'all can hold each other's butt cheeks and just ride on in there. But when you're, when you're not with the same group, space it out. Space it out so that you don't get spoilers. Because there are spoilers in the haunted house. When you go in there, you're you're right at that right space away from the people in front of you where you see them jump out of the closet. You're like, oh, god damn, man. I, done, I know you're coming out of there now. And then it's ruining for you. You didn't get the first hand jump scare. So it's a but it's always tough to create that space because you got people behind you breathing down your goddamn back. Oh my God. Because they're not knowing the strategy. I know the strategy. I'm like, yo, space it out. But then the people behind you, and they low-key be trying to cut. Right. Like, what do you what do you want to rush for? Right. Take your time, man. Like, We're gonna enjoy be scared. It. Take everything in. And I wanted to look around. Me too. Especially the Michael Myers one. I want I was I really wanted to like take in the rooms because right. the rooms were so detailed. And right. I was like, yo, who, oh, who's this in the picture? Right. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Like, but people yo. breathing down on neck. And the the staff low key was working it with the wand, like keep it moving. Hold on, man. Let me let me take this in. Right. I don't like how that one uh, staff member stepped in front of me oh, and yeah. said, keep moving, when I was just looking at that one oh, yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. That was over the top. Yeah, it's a bit much. Because I know they got to protect the performers and make sure I'm not trying to touch her. I get that. But I wouldn't – I guess I guess I got to give them some grace because they don't know if I'm going to touch her or do anything like that. So. Right. But it was just annoying because it was yeah. like, yo, I'm just looking to see if she's a real person. Um, But – so we went through, there was a Michael Myers theme, there was a Scarecrow theme, there was a La Llorona theme, there was a... Uh, weekend. <laughs> the Weekend. There was this little uh, Halloween, kind of like a general... Uh, what was the theme of that one? Which one? The one, the one the that was like a mummy? hotel building. Oh, yeah, that was just uh, ho uh, Ho Hotel Horrors. Hotel Horrors and yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, that was... Killer Clowns from Outer Space was dope. It was fun. They nailed the costumes. It was like the Killer Clowns from the movie was actually there at Universal last night. Yeah, it was It was fun. like they was like, yeah, that's a wrap on the film. And they just got the pack eight deep in the Volkswagen <laughs> and came over there to scare the shit out of us. And uh, it was dope. It was a good time. Super packed. We got on the regular rides. We got on the Harry Potter ride, which is amazing. We got on the Transformers ride. Um, I'm mad because I overlooked the mummy down bottom. Yeah. But it was a good time. Sabrina enjoyed herself, man. She was excited. Man, when Tony said, I got I got to, uh, tickets to go to Halloween Horror Nights on Halloween, mm. I cried. <laughs> Halloween is my Christmas. So like... Swift. So like doing stuff on Halloween, I get like emotional. Like you planning it. I'm yeah. Like, he really be caring, yo. He really <laughs> like, he gets me. Like he understands. We went to Halloween Horror Nights for Halloween. Man, it was a good time. Oh, then we had the Legends Collide. That one was all the right. The Legends, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was That was like the Wolfman, Dracula, and all them cats. Yeah. Oh, the Bloom House. You forgot to mention the Bloom, Bloom House. The Bloom House. That was another one. Yeah, that was another one. Uh, the weekend one was probably the most surprising because we really didn't know what to expect. Zero expectations. We really didn't. Like, what the hell is the, the weekend doing? Zero expectations. What she got? What what she got? What he got going on? And then even walking around the Harry Potter, uh, part was uh they they did a little spookiness. They had those like mm. weird dudes just walking around, yeah. like creepy. Uh, what are they called? Death oh. eaters. Is that what they were? They look different than the Death Eaters. Oh, well, that's what it says here. Death Eaters at the Wizarding World of Death Harry eaters. Potter. I don't remember them in the movie. Well, shit. I don't remember either yeah like the weekend it was a weekend like the singer weekend it was a weekend themed haunted house type joint up in that mug people were having botched plastic surgeries up in there so it definitely plays into the now you Man. know what i mean um but my favorites were michael myers uh i really liked the michael myers one i had some it was some crazy images in that la llorona joint Yo. The Killer Clowns from Outer Space was dope. Um, 
And the weekend joint was dope. And Harry Potter. Harry Potter was Harry fire. Was great. I really like yeah, the Killer Clowns because, like I said, I've watched the movie way more times than I would like to admit. Yeah. So it was so nostalgic. Right. And like I I recognized each clown and mm. remember them from the movie and their personality and stuff like that. So it was like it was like, yo, they really here. Like yeah. like it 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 felt like the my inner child was just came out and was right. just mad excited. Mm. Like, yo. The killer clown. Killer man. clown. Cause I remember I remember loving the little one. Yeah. And he was in there trying to fight, doing the put him up. Yeah. And like he did that in the movie. That movie was aggressive like the kills were a lot oh yeah for sure <laughs> but i loved it so much surprisingly they never scared me but yeah they never scared i appreciated me. i appreciated killer clowns from outer space and then they nailed that one scene when like the cop was a puppet he was dead oh yeah they nailed that they did. that was really good he was creepy the production value last night was outstanding man I was just looking at the logistics of creating every haunted house, the actors, the costumes, the look, the settings. I was just man. like, yo, man, it's a lot of work going into this and it's dope. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. Thank I was you. hungry, though. I want some popcorn. Yeah, I was mad hungry. I definitely want some popcorn. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, good times. Elon Musk makes Twitter chaotic. So it's the Wild Wild West. Let me ask you this, since you're a Twitter head. A twid. Oh, whoa. Um, you could say the N-word with the hard ER on Twitter before? With, with no ramifications? No, not with you no... You good? With no ramifications? People come for you. And I think you get your... But your that's not... Banned. that. You can get banned if somebody reports it, but you can say it. Yeah, well, people... There's no... There's no, there's no word or filter on her thing. since he came in? Uh, it's the people that he brings with him. Those now that are, they look at him like a frat brother kind of dude that's yeah. the culture that he brings with him mm -hmm. so him coming on there and he's seeing that ah he finally bought twitter all the things that he's promised to do and the culture that he brings in with that yeah. comes along with it so that it was like oh we're we free now like we can do whatever now that's kind of right. what comes along with it so, so he nothing, hasn't he brought has, in he hasn't any changed. changes to the he's only fired some people to the platform so far he did fire he's only people. fired some people and he has projected like he's saying that he wants to introduce an eight dollar a month plan to Oh, uh, yeah. Make it so that you can have a, you can be verified basically, like have a verified blue check, which I thought they already had that. They already have a blue check, not Twitter blue. That's something else. But this is like if you want a blue check on your page, you could just pay eight dollars a month and have it. Essentially. Oh, anybody can have a blue check. Yeah. Okay. Which not a good idea. Yeah. Because you know you could just have your profile look like somebody else's. Yeah. Facts. And you know that that go, that goes into the whole thing. Like it, the reason that Elon Musk even wanted Twitter is because he wants ownership over a platform so you can change what information gets pushed out right. to everybody else rather than it being the thing of like anybody can say what they right. want to say and then there's discussion about it or whatever this goes for for whatever yeah i don't i don't see him bringing too much good change to this platform and i do think that over time it'll die off like the certain people that you see will start to leave yeah and it's already starting because he's right. there and it's like it wouldn't be that bad like i don't think you guys understand he's a he's filthy rich yeah and then only certain things come from people who are that rich and they haven't been good right stephen king tweeted twenty dollars a month to keep my blue check fuck that they should pay me if that oh, gets shit. instituted i'm gone like enron <laughs> damn stephen <laughs> twenty dollars a month i I'm think he changed it to out. eight he, I think I seen him say eight, and then just for that. But I don't. You yeah, because yeah, Elon, eight. he responded to it. He said, "We need to pay the bills somehow. Twitter cannot rely entirely on advertisers. How about eight dollars a month?" Oh, the fuck. But who? But nobody's gonna care. Uh, like some people will care to do it. Obviously, right. You care that much about a blue check, I guess. But it it it's going to be harmful in a way where the people who we look at as credible sources become a thing of like they don't got a blue check. Well, we don't know, right? If this is legit or not. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, there's been fake pages and stuff. Something pops up, and it'd be like supposedly from one of these these sources that we've trusted, and it's a fake page that has a name that looks similar. And we'd be like, "Oh man, that's the that's the yep. fact," and people will run with it. It's right. what happens on TikTok because there's no dialogue there to let it be known. Like, this is not actual stuff. It's just like I saw it on TikTok. Right. Somebody said it, so it got to be true. Right. And that's what the thing is. There's no fact checking for it, so it's gonna come back pretty bad down the line. A couple years now, we're gonna look back and be like, it was a him getting Twitter was a, a fucking awful idea. Right. 
Yo. So, so is he talking about charging everybody or just people that want the blue check? I think it's just people who yeah. want the blue check. Yeah, okay. blue check. So I, somebody said on Twitter, underneath Elon's reply, mm-hmm. only on Titter. On oh, <laughs> Titter. Yeah. Uh, that's what Whatever. it is on my, <laughs> on my timeline. On um, only on Twitter can we watch a man worth $200 billion negotiate with a man worth $500 million about saving $12 a month. <laughs> oh. That's real. That's mad funny. Because they're really arguing. They're going back and forth. Right. I love that. That's because Stephen King is respected. Somebody said, I'll pay you $20 a month to not tweet ever again. <laughs> they said that to who? Uh, I think this is on, yeah, this is under me, Elon. Oh, okay. That's mad funny. Damn. Well, you know, it'd be easy for me to walk away from Twitter. I'm not really passionate about it anyway. It's To me, it's, it's hard for me to think about that just because there's no other social media platform that's similar in that vein yeah. mm-hmm. to me because like we got all these other things there's just constant you know streams of just media it's pictures it's videos it's constant mm-hmm. there's not a lot of dialogue that goes on and even if it is it's just in the comments and comments aren't necessarily like a thread of like people talking back to each other right and then you can't go down a rabbit hole as easy on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever the platform yeah. is where it's true like you can see where it came from you can see where it's going. You can see who was talking about it, what these discussions are being had under all these things. It has right. a way where it's structured in a way where we can understand what's actually happening with gotcha. words. It's not always just pictures. It's with words. Don't mm-hmm. they do that on Reddit? See, but the thing about Reddit uh, is Reddit's... Reddit is is like it's, it's almost it's Twitter, but like more unhinged, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And there's in, you have to be in these communities to even see those kind of things happening. Oh, yeah. Whereas on Twitter, it's like you could be far away from it, but you can always catch a glimpse of it if you just even... If somebody just brought it to your attention, like in yeah. the timeline or whatever, and then based Twitter, on you follow. Twitter gets everything first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Twitter gets every single thing. Instagram be like a month late. Yeah. They'd be like, look at this video. It's like, bro, that's been on yeah. Twitter. That's on you Twitter. know what I mean? And it's just like when people show me stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, right. That's yeah, been, it, yeah, that's it, it almost thing. has to make it to Twitter in order for it to be viral. Viral, yep. Mm-hmm. Like it, it literally has to. It's almost like a filter, like a viral filter. Like, okay, once. Because say you make a TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. And you have like let's say less than 100 followers, right? Somebody, one of those followers or whatever, or if it just comes on somebody's For You page, be like, yo, this is ridiculous. Let me put it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Now that TikTok can go insane because it'll automatically pop up Mm -hmm. on people's like timeline and feed. And then they'll go to your TikTok and be like, yo, and like, you know, dig in deeper. But if it goes, like, once they post it to Twitter, it can blow up, like, insane. I see it all the time mm-hmm. where I'm just like, oh, what is this video? I need Twitter to blow up my voiceovers. <laughs> I mean. Numbers be ass cheeks on Twitter. It's just that, yeah, the, the, it depends on the engagement yeah. of the people that follow you Numbers and stuff like that. Numbers be ass cheeks Whatever, Twitter, whatever platform you really branch out off on first is the one that usually yeah. sustains itself after a while. So your stuff is video and pictures related. That's Instagram is obviously going to be the place for that. Right. That's stuff that, that happens on Twitter. But for a while, you know, Twitter wasn't really, mm-hmm. you know, now on Twitter you can do pictures and videos at the same time or so GIFs and videos. Like, oh, you can do all of that now. But they just got that going. Right. But they're going into the a way where they're, they almost want to make it that thing where it's like a constant stream of just content. Like you flip through and you just see videos all the time. And I hate it. Yeah. That's the one thing I've always hated about like autoplay. You can't stop autoplay on Instagram. Mm. Like TikTok is just like after you see one video you Skype again and there's another one and there's yeah. another one and there's another one. Constant flux. It's constant. Instagram you can't even pause videos. Yo, I Man. looked up I looked up Tony Baker mm-hmm. in the Twitter search. Uh the first first thing you come up and then in the second is uh Tony Baker the goat at this voiceover shit. Can't nobody tell me different. You get a lot of props on Twitter. Mm. Then we have somebody reacting to you. You here for that tiger? Mm, and it's mm. funny because other people's like stuff will do numbers for you, which is another thing about Twitter that's just, that's interesting. Like you could post it, mm. and nobody might see it. Somebody else repost it, like yo, and then like clown you or something, like yeah. or, have, or you have like a funnier caption for it, mm. and it'll go crazy. That's crazy. That's another thing too. You got to really think about these captions. Like if you if you tweet with. Twitter mentality in mind, it can go crazy, mm. which is funny because it's a very specific mindset. You know who has it? Kev. Mm. Kev is a low key a Twitter god. Mm. Like he's really nailed Twitter, and I, I love that for him. Yeah, he goes crazy on Twitter. Like his numbers, and it's funny too because uh, 
My tweets do well on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I post my tweet and throw it up in the Instagram, it'd be, they do well. And I just be like, well, shit. But in Twitter, they just be, some of them do well. It just depends on what I'm talking about. But yeah. What's your, what's the difference in followers on each one though? Tw- uh, Twitter, I have like 149K. Yeah. Instagram, you want Instagram point. is like 2 million, 2.5 million. Yeah. So you even, that ain't even 10%. So it's so, like like if I if I say something on Instagram, let's say I just write it out with the caption, which is just all text with the black screen, it might it might just do okay. But if I put if I screenshot my tweet and then put it on Instagram, it usually does well. Especially when I do like back to back tweets. I I call it Tony Baker in the in the tweets. Um if I do a back to back one where it's like ten tweets, it usually does good numbers and it's good like interaction hmm. but uh twitter is just but i'll be forgetting man it's too many platforms for me man it's like yeah it's, it's tiktok and twitter and instagram and facebook it's just like i got then they just i got pick, a zero pick apart each one. other's shit to yeah do. i just gotta TikTok focus is, on one man tiktok is the guy right now so everybody's trying to do things like tiktok and it's like well that's what make tiktok great but that's honestly how instagram killed snapchat almost yeah it was like oh we getting stories Y'all like right. stories. You getting stories, right? So then they got that, and they would Snapchat fell sharp after that. Right. Some people still use it, but they fell off. But then they were like, "Now Instagram doesn't like TikTok, so they're trying to compete with them." They wanted mm-hmm. to compete with YouTube, but good luck. YouTube is the real giant out there, right? Oh, Outside yeah. of Facebook, YouTube is the real giant, and good luck beating them out, right? Y'all might as well just sit down, and let them have it. Yeah, y'all ain't y'all ain't got to beat everybody, man. Just be happy with the little traction you got and hush. Man, YouTube is TV. YouTube Since, is yeah, TV. I, for me. I don't TV. have TV. I I YouTube and yeah. Twitch and that's it. Like I I put YouTube videos on because w- what I like about YouTube is that I can multitask with YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like when you scroll and you got to you got to physically sit there and scroll. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You can't really focus on other things while you're scrolling. People say they can do it, but you really can't. A YouTube video though, I can play it, sit my phone down. Do other stuff around the house, close proximity, because I'm listening mm-hmm. to whatever it is. Like I, 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 I do a lot of stuff where I can listen to. I can listen to the top ten movies of 1990. I could just. I don't need to see it. Yeah. So it gives me that opportunity to, you know, just just have it playing in the background. I'm listening. I'm, you know, you know, honed in to where I ain't got to be glued to the visual. Yep. That's and I ain't got to do another thing with my hand either. It just it goes into the next video. So. Yeah, they've they've crafted that for a long time, and that's where they you know YouTube cut into like podcasts a little bit because if you made a YouTube video, it was like, well, damn, that's basically a podcast, right? And then they were like, oh, because it's just if you're talking and the visuals aren't that important, mm-hmm. then people will just listen. They'll just put their phone on and just listen, right? Just be running and letting it play, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, getting all this stuff about the Godfather I need. I'm just listening, like, yeah, oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, brush my teeth in the shower. Still, you know, got the videos playing. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles are seven and zero, undefeated. A lot of people, a lot of people think their record is soft because they got a they got an easy schedule. According to a lot of people, they got a soft schedule. Like the teams they've been playing, you know, haven't been high caliber. According to according to the naysayers, they don't know if if. The, if if the Eagles are the real deal because they're in a softer conference and division and all that all that good stuff, but regardless of how you feel about the schedule, they are the only undefeated team in the NFL. So you know you got to be looking at them. Um, they they making it happen. Anything can happen in the NFL, you know. And given their upcoming schedule, it's pretty easy still. So. But the truth is in the pudding. And the pudding is always the postseason. So we'll see what happens in the post. And if the if the NFC is is soft, like some of y'all claim, then we're going to see Philly in the Super Bowl against the AFC powerhouse. May it be Kansas City or Buffalo. We'll see what happens. So, um, but shout out to the Eagles, 7-0. I have a soft spot for the Eagles, even though I'm a Bears fan. I'm Bears all day, Bears all night. 
I have a soft spot for the Philadelphia Eagles. They are my second favorite NFL team, and they have been since the 90s, since the early 90s, since Randall Cunningham played for the Eagles. Um, I've had a soft spot for the Philadelphia Eagles, so I'm always happy for y'all. Um, and I was happy y'all won that Super Bowl. And yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? I see you, Eagles. Out here getting it done, making it happen. Shout out to my brother-in-law, Lamar. He's an Eagles fan. Um, I'm sure he's excited about life right now. Meanwhile, I'm out here tortured with the Bears, but I'm sticking to it. I'm in this. Bear down. Bears all day. We're going, we winning the Super Bowl. We winning the Super Bowl this year, god damn it. I said what I said. Bears all day, god damn. Speaking of football, people are arguing online about Tom Brady versus Giselle. What's her last name? It don't matter. That's how popular she is. Right? Well, she's not popular no, uh, enough. Bush, if you don't know the Buchen, last name. No, Bouchen. I said it's some of the B. It's Bouchen. Get Giselle Bouchen. Yeah. It's a, a two dots above the U. So yeah. I don't know how if you go Bo or Boo. Boudin, Boudin. 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 People are arguing that, you know, Giselle is nothing without Tom Brady, <laughs> which is absolute horse shit. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um,. Giselle Buku Dollars, Bushin, <laughs> Bunchin. Oh, he spoke up about it. Giselle. But this this is what I'm saying. Like, like the reason I say it don't matter about her last name is that her having Brady as a last name doesn't make her. I ain't talking about his no, no. last name. No, I know, I know. But I was just saying, like, her, she's like so popular mm-hmm. that people are are not realizing that she does like she's Giselle, and we know which one we're talking about. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we don't need a last name. Like oh, Giselle, who? Right. You know we we know we're talking about the model. We know exactly who we're referring to. Mm. So like that's what I meant by like it doesn't matter because she is who she is. You but you also I? think she's way more popular than Tom Brady. I think Used that to ten toes. Oh yeah, that. I think I think a lot of people know who she is. I think a lot more people know who she is worldwide because. American football is not that popular everywhere. If she was married to a soccer player, then I'd be like, oh, he got that. Whoever, Mm -hmm. if it was like the Tom Brady of soccer, I'd be like, all right, well, I can't really speak on that because soccer is way bigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Soccer is beyond America. Uh, Well, I would give you that, but Tom Brady is a different case. The fact that when you become. When you become a GOAT in one of the biggest sports, um, everybody knows who you are. Like the world knew who Michael Jordan was worldwide. They did like a poll. He was like one of the most famous peoples to ever exist. Even though, you know, basketball might not be, you know, at that time it wasn't huge worldwide. Mm -hmm. But Tom Brady is considered one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game and so with that comes worldwide recognition so my my stance is this i don't know you know i think giselle has her own fame own popularity own career own name so to say that she's nothing without tom brady is absolute horseshit but i'm also not saying that automatically more people know who she is over Tom Brady. I can't I can't co-sign that with any type of, you know, um confidence at all because I know that you know, Tom Brady is is huge because of the the pedigree that he has. If he was a new quarterback, sure. But he's been he's been in the game for mad long, won several Super Bowls. And like I said before, you know, 100 100 million people watch the Super Bowl damn near every year. 90 million, 95 million, 100 million watch one game. And it's become like a global thing. So um, that's my take on it. Well, everybody in the chat is saying her. But what are they basing it on? Her, like everything she's done. She's Her being the first uh, Victoria's Secret Angel, her being one of like the top supermodels. 
And I don't know. I'm I'm giving it to Giselle. Why? Because not everyone cares about football. Not everybody cares about Victoria's Secrets and modeling, though. But so like, you got you got that duality. But she's so the difference between that is that if I'm not watching football and like he's not going to be on every ad everywhere. His his ads, like like say he's the face for is it what's what's he the face for? Football. No, I'm talking about <laughs> I'm like shaving product. Let's nah, say no, he's a, he's uh, been the face on other stuff. But that's he, what I'm saying. He like, was give on. Me, I give think he was thing. Gillette. I think he was on Gillette. He they hasn't do. been. Yeah, I mean, as far as that, his marketing, he had no. Nah, he's not marketable. And like that's what that. I'm saying. Like you can go places and see Giselle in lights you can go to but she's like, a model yeah that's what i'm saying that like, don't necessarily know that you know who that model is but though. if you see her face you'd be like oh yeah i just seen her in, in the magazine like oh that's the magazine girl like i feel like she's just more like well known and seen like she's, she's more visible she's way more visible but that don't mean everybody knows who that model is i don't think every, i think way more people know her than globally but there's no way we can quantify Right. We could sit here and be like, yeah, more people know her. More people know him. How do we quantify that? Every, people are saying she's in every Vogue for every country, which is another thing. Uh, what's the face for in football? Uh, Forbes stated that she earned uh, $386 million in her modeling career. Yeah. It, and look, internationally, she is more known than he is. That's what Afro said. How does she know? Afro, where are your sources? And yeah. then people. I mean, she was she was on like the because she's Brazilian, so she was uh, Forbes most one of the most influential Brazilian celebrities, mm -hmm. one of the most powerful women list. You know, she's like they ranked her at, on these kind of things or stuff like that. Right. And you know, I think as a man, you're gonna say Tom Brady. No, it's not even. It has nothing to do with being a man. I was like, I it's feel just... like a lot of people that since you're. I get the stat that you're basing, like, he's been in the Super Bowl a lot, so people will know that he's played in the Super Bowl, and they can hear the name and be like, I'm familiar with it more so than, like, his his name may be more familiar to people just because of football in that regard, right? Like, his name, mm -hmm. per se. Giselle's face, in general, would be one of those things that people may not even have an idea that that was who it was, but like, damn, I definitely know Absolutely. who that is. Her face is like, you know, I've seen her before, but I might not know the name. Yeah. They said that his she's name also, is gonna ring out. She's also a global humanitarian. Yo, the listen, the chat is going crazy for Giselle. Mm -hmm. As they said, sex is way more popular than football or Brady, which is legit. And Absolutely. Uh, and then look, Jerome said, nah, I'm a man, and Giselle is definitely more known than Tom Brady worldwide. She's How def know? she definitely has him globally, and it's not a gender thing, but national, it's Brady. By the name alone, Tom Brady is more known. I had no idea who Giselle was, but you're American. Like, like uh, people who really care about and soccer players, like soccer fans, I should say, uh, or football over there, uh, they like I've speak I've spoken to. There's this one uh, British individual that I know that when I say the the word football and I mean American football, they go. Oh yeah, for sure. So like they'll they... soccer is the most wide sport in the world. Yeah, but, that's not the argument. But what I'm saying is that a lot of people, there's a lot of soccer fans that don't even care about American football. Absolutely, and they'll still Facts. be like, I don't, I don't give a fuck about no who, what, what. But uh, ask them, Super do they Bowl. know who Tom Brady is? Okay, and I bet you they'd be like, yeah, yeah, he's the American football guy. But fuck football, it's not about what's the more popular sport. I'm I'm looking at the longevity of it. His name has been ringing out worldwide, even though foot, American football is not big overseas, as y'all say. But his name rings out. Um, they also say that she's been active since '97. When did Tom Brady start playing? <laughs> like the '90s. Yeah, right, right, right around there. Yeah, he didn't get he didn't get popular till the early 2000s. Though. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The chat is agreeing with me. But yeah, I don't know. What do I know? And as far as like Giselle, like I, I, I think I, when they first got together, I was just like, "Yo, who, who is this?" And then I think I looked her up, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I've seen her around before," because usually with models, 
I'm trying to think how I become aware of models. She was dating Leonardo DiCaprio before, apparently. Before she oh, got with Brady, that she was with DiCaprio. Um, because I'm trying to think of all the models I knew coming up, like a Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, uh, Tyra Banks, Veronica Webb, and then 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 I don't know. I fell off the the model wagon. Not the model wagon. Yeah, it was just like they were. I don't know you know, they were like who. in stuff too, though. Yeah, because it was like they they would have to do other stuff to get me to be like, oh, oh, that's who that is. It would be, it would either be like a music video, or something, something along those lines to get me to to register. And I was just like, oh, 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 okay. And then boom, like Tyra Banks, I feel like I knew about her before the Fresh Prince, mm-hmm. and then. And with ad, when it comes to ads and like people doing, you know, being the face of stuff, I feel like I've seen Tom Brady on the face of stuff at airports internationally. Because, you know, international advertisement is different than here. Like they have, uh, I'll be going like when I travel abroad, I'll see like Leonardo DiCaprio as the face of something. I was like, I never see this in America. Like, I never even knew they did a, it. It was for a while. I didn't know Johnny Depp was the face of a cologne until they started really promoting it here. And I was like, Savage. George Clooney with a watch on. And it was just like, yo, I never see this in America. So it's like, you know, as far as facial recognition and brands and all this other stuff, all these factors come into play. And we talking about, we talking about name and face recognition. Shit, Beyonce probably got more followers than Jay Z, but that doesn't necessarily mean one more popular than the other. You can't go by followers all the time, and women are gonna get more followers because women look better. And she's more popular than Jay Z. That's legit, though. Beyonce, globally. Again, globally. But I feel like Beyonce is like on some Michael Jackson shit. Like You, you play... don't know Beyonce and not know Jay-Z. But you know, you don't, you know Jay-Z because of Beyonce across the seas, if, if anything. But you may not know a Jay-Z song. You're going to know a Beyonce song. I feel like Beyonce is like Michael Jackson. Jay-Z is not. You know what I mean? Like you can play a certain song like uh, Drunk in Love or something like that. In like because some random hip-hop? country, and yeah, and have it, and everybody be like, "Oh yeah, I know this song." You know, start people who don't even know English will start singing, right? Obviously, and then but you play like a Jay Z song, and they probably bop their head, but they're not gonna know the words. I think that quantifies. Is, that's the difference between hip hop and singing. Mm-hmm. It's it's harder to if you don't speak English. It's harder to sit here and, and rap along to Jay Z. I'm talking about knowing. The person, mm, I don't know. I think because you know singing a song, you know it's easier. But what you got to do some intricate, especially Jay Z lyrics. Most people from America can't keep up with Jay. Look, I love Jay Z. I I don't think I will. I don't fight. think Jay Z is bigger. Than yeah, Beyonce. I will fight for Jay Z. I, I don't. I wouldn't say Jay is bigger. I'm saying they're equal. No, absolutely not. Absolutely I don't think not. they're equal either. Absolutely not. Even I, then, like Beyonce, like Destiny's Child, like during that era, she was worldwide then. Mm-hmm. That's so she's and she's still been that. I'm not and I'm not knocking Jay Z's impact or anything right. like that Mm-mm. worldwide or anything like that. Um, but yeah, but him getting with Beyonce definitely, I feel like a little bit of that rubbed off, and they were both in their prime at that time too. Right, boosted his mm-hmm. international stock, probably. I don't know. I think it's hand in hand at this point. No, definitely can't agree with that. Mm. Even I then, I was say, like, they don't even like Jay Z like that. <laughs> well, that's Beyonce. Well, that's because you know, of the, you know all the stuff that came out about it. But look, and everybody in the chat again. Yeah. Um, I will say this because I did have this argument, and this is what I mean by I will, I will fight. 
with mm-hmm. Jay-Z. Somebody once said that Jay-Z would not exist today without Beyonce. That, that is, is not true. Cap. It's horseshit. That is not true. All this existing without another person is horseshit. Yeah, that is absolutely not true. Jay-Z would be very relevant and he is still he would still be Jay-Z, but Jay-Z cannot touch Beyonce as far as global like popularity. Here's my thing though, yo. And this this is what I'm leaning on. You have to do a poll. It's hard for me to sit here and, and believe that people worldwide don't know who Tom Brady is and don't know who Jay-Z is. I just can't believe that. And I know y'all are y'all are standing firm or y'all no, they're more popular worldwide. How do you know for sure? Like well, to ask somebody overseas, who is this person? Or who is Jay-Z? And have them sit there and be like, I don't know who Jay-Z is. I can't buy that. I can't. Even with Tom Brady, it's like, Tom Brady, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? So for me to be for for it to be proven to me that somebody's way more popular than another person, I would have to see. The international, what's his name? Billy Eichner on the street poll. <laughs> so stupid. I do think on that on the overseas scale. In these in these particular instances, I, I get what you're saying, but I think the the consumption of the media that the in this instance the women have been on mm-hmm. easier easier to digest in that instance. And I think that sticks with people a little bit more. Than the other side, like you were saying, like with hip hop, it's one of the things. It was like you, if you can't keep up with the oh, lyrics yeah, yeah, and stuff like sure. that, then they might not catch on to it. And they just would disregard it or anything like that. Now, being a fan, that's one thing. Yeah, like being a fan of Beyonce over Jay Z, I get that all day. But not knowing who Jay Z is, I'm not buying that two for a dollar. At this point in the game, I can't. I can't even buy it. You can. You can even argue that, you know. If Beyonce is as popular as as y'all say, you're not gonna know who her husband is. Get the fuck out of here. Jerome said, "Sorry, Tony, but I know people personally that know who Beyonce is, but not Jay Z." Who, Jerome? <laughs> who doesn't know who uh, Jay Z is? There's a lot of people. I mean, it's I don't know. Jerome. Who? Because if you're focused on just the music. And you don't even realize, like, you don't even tap into her personal life. Mm-hmm. You're not going to know who Jay-Z is. You're not even going to know. i give you that. Like, you know you what I mean? If you don't know the music. No, no. If you only know the music. Oh, wait, what? Like, people only know your comedy, right? Uh-huh. A lot of people don't even know that I exist in your life. Mm-hmm. And we've been together for five years. Right. Because people only tap into your comedy. Mm-hmm. They don't tap into the podcast. They don't tap into anything else. They don't know anything about your personal life. They just be like, yo... Tony's comedy. This this is facts. There's there's people. Somebody asked me the other day. Oh, I you know Tony Baker? I was like, yeah, I live with the man. We've been but, together for five years. But I'm saying, if people are only focused on Beyonce's music mm-hmm. and doesn't go beyond that, and hasn't like, there's people out there that aren't on social media, but they still listen to music. Right. So if you're only listening to Beyonce albums, and these this is not streaming. Mm-hmm. This is like real albums in your hands right. cds or whatever it may be if that's all you're listening to like yo i love beyonce right what about jay-z who's that that's beyonce and they're not going to concerts that's beyonce's because they can't afford it yeah that's beyonce's husband i'm thinking of people like in the philippines like you know just like like even like i don't know dr like in the boonies Right. Not people in cities or people who have access to like certain things that we do and mm-hmm. stuff like that. People who just have access to the bare minimum, which can just be the music. Yeah. It's going to be Beyonce music and they're they're probably not they're going to be like, "Oh, Beyonce's married? Oh, Jay-Z? Uh, oh, I never even knew this." You know what I mean? Because they're only tapped in Where like Where they getting the music from? From a store, they can get it or a lot of times like there's a lot of places where things get gifted to them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You have to think of like small villages, right? <laughs> they only get whatever they get. But I'm thinking of stuff like yeah, this. Yeah. If we're talking globally, we got to be, right, we got right. we gotta really tap into stuff like that. Yeah. Like they're even wearing shirts of things that they never heard of, but it's like, hey, mm-hmm. it was gifted to us. And so I'm obsessed with this now. Right. And so it's like, you have to think on that level that a lot of people aren't tapping into people's personal lives just because we know the ins and outs and we know, you know, blue and like the, you know, we, we know a lot blue. because we're on uh, Blue Ivy. Oh, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know that kind of information. Yeah. Right. That is, and that that's American culture. That's one hundred percent what what we tap into. Like, what our like our news. That's our news. That's our yes. it's our culture. Like right. that's a that it's a cultural thing like that. And yeah, the international side of it, I'm sure, is totally different. Like people on again, I'm going back to Twitter. People mm-hmm. on Twitter be like, "How do you know so much about celebrities?" Like people, international people be like, why are you guys so obsessed? Why are Americans so obsessed with celebrities instead of just focusing on talent? Right. Like a lot of people don't understand it. Mm. A lot of people are like, how do you know this? And it's like, oh, because it's everywhere. What do you mean? How do you, how do you not know this? Right. But we take that in. Mm. We We consume everything. But other people just consume talent. Yeah. And then they leave it at that. And then they go on with their normal lives and... They consume like p- politics might be more important than no. what uh, what Kanye is talking about going right. crazy over here. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just a different culture mm. globally, right? And that's what I mean by like not everyone's gonna know Jay Z regardless if they know Beyonce, mm. because they might know Beyonce's music, and the second they hear her voice, they're gonna be like, oh Beyonce, mm, okay. but they're not gonna know Jay Z. That's a good point. That's a good point. The culture difference. Mm-hmm. See, I think a lot of the biggest, the big, the biggest stars are, you know, they will have that, that big international crossover too. Mm-hmm. But it just depends on the, the type of music too, because that guy, that music got to cross over and really appeal. Like rap, really, you know, as far as international stuff, they might fuck with it. But it was like, as far as it being like the biggest genre, that's recent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we paid attention to it before it had hits and stuff like that, but for it to be running the charts, like, you got to yeah. compete with a rapper nowadays. That is fairly recent. And Jerome made a good point, too. He said, older family. Mm. They know Beyonce, but they don't know Jay-Z. Yeah. That's and I get, the old, I get the older. Yeah. That, too. But that's a part of, like, global popularity, overall popularity. It's just, like, you got to also factor in elderly. You got to factor in... People be old out here. Yeah, people be the old, kids too. People aren't privileged. I'm sure there's kids out there that be like Jay Z. <laughs> yeah, like he make music, but it ain't it ain't for them. Right. Mm-hmm. That'll miss and them. 100%. He's not as active as he once was musically yeah, at all. Yeah. And Beyonce, Beyonce still be still making active. stuff, and she and the thing is like on top of that, like something that even if they don't, her, her music might not be for kids. Dancing. Yeah. yeah they gonna sure. tap into the dancing. Jay Z ain't yeah. gonna. He not gonna dance. You know right. that ain't his thing. He never danced. Yeah. And then like being like a woman referring to themselves as Beyonce that's like a that's like almost a verb like you're very yeah. Beyonce you know what I mean mm. like and people automatically know what that means like I'm the Beyonce of the group it's like, oh yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about you know what I mean yeah. not that I'm the Jay-Z of the group like the hell does that mean well, you know? no, no yeah, but that's what I'm just saying like you Justin Timberlake of the group you would get it yeah yeah the JT <laughs> some people don't, might not know he was in a group yeah, that's that's another thing. A lot of people don't Justin know Timberlake about Timberlake is probably his success outside of the group is bigger than when he was in there. I would think. Yeah. Not sales wise. Maybe not sales wise, but just in general. Yeah. Because he went on to acting. He took music. He didn't stop doing music. Just was fucking acting for so long and all the other stuff. Like that's that. harder to quantify though because the in sync numbers are greater than the solo numbers. Yeah, but it's this thing when it comes to like that group stuff. Yeah. I'm not too, because I was young when NSYNC was around, so I'm not sure how much of it was like, oh, yeah, Justin Timberlake, he's that guy in the group. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas mm-hmm. when he stepped outside of the group, it was like, hey, the dude from NSYNC, he's doing his own thing. And then right. when we grew up with it, it was like, we just know Justin Timberlake. You, we don't know too yeah. much about NSYNC. Right. Because so, if you come in if you come in late in the game, let's say you come in, when you start really paying attention to music, it's like with me and Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. for example, like, it's kind of tough for me because I remember the Jackson Five cartoon. Yeah. So if you come in, if you come to Michael Jackson later on, you're gonna be like, uh, "Who is this guy?" You know what I'm saying? You're not really gonna know about the yeah. Jackson Five. But if you come in early, you'd be like, "Oh, he branched out. He's doing his own thing." Like you excited or whatever. And with Justin Timberlake, after what was it? After Celebrity, I think that's when he did uh, Justified. So when you look at Justified's numbers compared to No Strings Attached or uh, even Celebrity, they were doing a million in a week. 
NSYNC's uh, No Strings Attached did over two million opening week, so it was like a record. It was just like this is the biggest, uh, this is the biggest first week sales of all time. So then Justify comes out, and it's just like it went like double, triple platinum. And, you know, those numbers were cute yeah, compared to the NSYNC numbers. Yeah, and then his smash was uh, uh, what's the one after the one he's stomping on the disco ball? Future sexy love song. That was the one. That's the that's the disco ball one. The so one after, after that one. Oh, um, 2020. 2020. That's it when crazy. it was like. Because the, the one before that, the crazy future love sexy one catap catapulted his solo standing as a solo artist and musician once he started working, you know, with these cats. And that album really bubbled and popped. So then by the time 2020 comes out, it was like, yeah, we ready, we ready for ass. this. Gap too, and so that album sales wise had the anticipation of like what they were able to do with uh in sync mm. on, on the numbers front, yeah. Um, and so you got, but if you were born late enough, you just like, no, Justin Timberlake always just been Justin Timberlake, yeah, you know what I mean, and so. There's always that story. You got Beyonce and Justin Timberlake, Michael Jackson and Jackson Five, and I feel like I feel like the Beatles solo never really outdid. Nah, the group. I ain't Who, even got to be around. What's it? What's his name? Paul is McCartney. a solo star now that he left the group. Uh, Nick. Oh, Nick Jonas. No, I always call him Nick Styles. Harry Styles. Harry Styles. Harry Styles. Oh, Harry he was Styles. With yeah. One Direction. One Direction, right? Yeah. And so now he like the he's. Only one too. He's the guy mm, right now that he branched off from a group. Yeah. Morrissey. Morrissey, yeah. He was with the Smiths. Yeah. Smiths always just sounded like one person to me. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It was just Morrissey. Uh, <laughs> him going solo is just like, you know, you had these moments where they jump off the page and go solo. Mm -hmm. Cisco and Drew Hill, another um, example. Yeah. Um, that was a common thing. He was in the group and then they was like, man, you know, that pressure. Yeah. Branch off or just some scuffles or whatever. And he's like, nah, man, we gonna do we 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 doing our solo thing. And it's always gonna be that one dude everybody was already paying attention to that's going. The lead. Yep, the lead gonna take it. Or you got you got a situation where multiple people can eat from the same group. Cause mm -hmm. I feel I feel like George, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were able to eat mm -hmm. solo and George Harrison. A lot of people sleep on what he was able to do solo. And then um, groups like the Fugees, Wyclef oh, yeah. went solo first. Mm, yeah. And he went double platinum on his own. So it was just like, you know what I'm saying? And then Even Lauren. though Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill came smack fire out of everybody on oh, no. her solo album. So it was just like, but Wyclef was no slouch on the other end, but it was just like, but mm -hmm. we, I feel like, and people argue with this, they argue with me about this on the, Daddy issues, kind of, sort of, but they were saying Wyclef was the star of the Fugees, and I don't agree with that. I feel like Wyclef was super talented and dope, and you know what he was able to bring, and he he popped. But I feel like Lauren Hill has always been the star of the Fugees in yeah. terms of. When I first heard of the Fugees, it was the vocab song. And I was just like, yo, who is this girl? Because she led the track. Mm -hmm. She was the first one up. She sang the hook. And she was the first. I was like, yo. Because she she was so talented all around. And they, and like, I feel like her presence matched up with the, the men. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. even though she sang and then rapped. Mm -hmm. But she did both perfectly. Yeah. Like, beautifully. Mm -hmm. And like, her words, her wordplay was just so like, yo, hold on. Right. You know what I mean? And I was just like, defecating on your microphone. Wait, right. hold on, hold on. What? And she, uh, <laughs> I just feel like she stood out. Exactly, Miranda. That's what I was trying to convey. Why Claire created the Fugees, Lauren is the star. And that's that's what I was trying to convey, like when yeah. I was saying that, because even with Fugees, the score, you take Fuji Lies, the opening single. She's all over that. She's singing the hook. And then, ready or not, she's singing the hook again. So these these melodic hooks are what what brings people in. Yep. Like y'all were saying on a global scale, the yeah, melodic the hook melodic is like, 
You that's what my dad mm-hmm. always told me in music. He's like that melodic. He's like if you if you can break off into it, that's what's gonna sell. Like, yeah. That's like when you listen to uh, like even with Ray Shrimmer, there's two guys, but most people know Sway Lee because right. he's the melodic dude in the group, mm-hmm. right? And they everybody go for him. It's mm-hmm. like when Migos was coming up, everybody was like Quavo. He's the melodic guy in the group, right? So people mm-hmm. attach themselves to that because it's like ah oh, man, it's just that it, it feels like it's just something different. Yeah. Thanks. So that's that's the, yeah that's the truth about groups and yeah for sure I would I would think Lauren Hill's the the star the standout one in that because everything every song I think about the Fuji's like well I hear Lauren's voice Cause no it, shade to Wyclef but or when Price. I hear when I think about Wyclef I don't think about anything necessarily uh, Fuji's related I think the someone please call nine one one song when you think of Wyclef mm-hmm. personally that's me personally yeah. though because yeah. Fuji's was still like I was probably. Very like ninety six is when the score came out. How old was you then? One, Jesus Christ, Lord. So um, yeah, like no, Ready or Not is the one I remember. I don't even know when that came out. So but, now I will say this though: to to pivot to New Edition, I feel like, and this is my opinion, I don't feel like Bobby was the star of the group. Hmm. When New Edition first hit the scene, he wasn't. Cause I feel like Ralph was singing more lead than than Bobby. Now, you know, of course, solo wise, Bobby did incredible numbers with with his uh, "Don't Be Cruel" album. But I never felt like when I saw New Edition, I never felt like, "Yo, Bobby, man, that dude right there." Yeah, that's. It's the whoever's the lead usually is the one. I think right. Bobby just had like a a bigger pool of things to pull into, like his right. talent, so that he was able to diversify that when it came to his music. Yeah, it was he's just like coming like, out. He's oh, like, oh, he man. dancing and he singing. Okay, and right. he was from New Edition. Okay, yeah. we we rocking with it. Right, and then other guys just like, well, and the, and, and the stuff was hidden because when you when you think of the New Edition hits, you might you might hear Ralph first more than anything, mm-hmm. and and so New Edition is like a special case of. Do they have? Did they have a true star at the time when they were a group? You had the lead singers or whatever. You had Ralph and then Bobby, but it was just like you were just listening to whoever was leading the track. Yeah, and it it was less about um, uh, you know Ralph need to go solo. Yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't, that. There, it was there's just no like, like true standout necessarily. Right. Yeah, like, man, get rid of good. these other cats. It, it, it wasn't like that. And New Edition is one of the rare groups where everybody was eating when they branched off. Yeah, everybody went platinum. That's great. Everybody went platinum on the New Edition break off. Case in point, last week when Tony said, "No disrespect to the West," I automatically thought of Lauren Hill on the Nappy Heads track. I don't have Wyclef lyrics ingrained in me, in me like that. And also, I want to speak on this, and this is kind of off topic before we get out of here. And I couldn't get to the Here Comes Mariah. I don't even know what that means. It means Christmas. It's, it's is after Halloween, everybody's no. <laughs> straight to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I have a question. Do you, do you wanna, want me to ask a question before? Before I lose my train of thought. Go ahead. We were in the group chat arguing today. Oh, God. And I know y'all think I've been wrong today with the Giselle and the Beyonce. I'm going to give y'all that Beyonce. Y'all made great points. I'm standing firm on Giselle. I can, I can see that. But I... It's horse shit to say that she is nothing without Tom Brady. That's oh, absolute garbage. Yeah, I would yeah. never co-sign that in a million years. But I do think Tom Brady is he up there just too. as known yeah. as Giselle. But I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give y'all the Beyonce over Jay Z. I apologize. I'm gonna give y'all that. Thank you. Now, um, in the group chat, we said that we were talking about who, which region in the U.S. has the best food. So, and you can timestamp this, Serena. Which region of the U.S. has the best food? Um, I feel like, for me, it's a tie between the South and the East. Now, a lot of knee-jerk reaction is going to be the South, the South, the South. But for me personally, I feel like the East is more diverse. Because when you think about food, we're not just talking soul food. We're not just talking New Orleans. We're talking 
food as a whole for a region. And I feel like the East is more diverse in what types of food they do well. Facts. You can get some good soul food in the East. You can get some good Italian food on the East. You can get some good uh, Caribbean food on the East. You can get so many different genres of food at a high level in the Eastern region. Um, so I was saying it's, it's, it's a close tie between the East and the South. I'm leaning towards East, though, for my number one pick. I'm putting West dead last. Smart. Now, Keon at DC was like, man, Tony always coming for the West. The West is that and the third. And then Keenan, Keon, and DC are from the West. So it's, it's personal for them. It's personal. I get it. It's personal. They want to hold on. They want to hang on. And they were like, no, it's, it's good Mexican food here. Now, I dinged them because... If you're leaning, if you're basing the whole region on Mexican food, you're already at a disadvantage. If you're just leaning on Mexican food to hold up the whole West, West Coast region, which also includes Oregon, Washington, you're doing Nevada in there, Arizona. If all you got is Mexican food over here, you lost. Because in the South, you're diverse. You got soul food. You got you got you got some French cuisine mixed into the stuff in New Orleans. New Orleans is a fantastic city for food. You got barbecue in the South, so you have more diversity in the South. And then East has damn near everybody. So I'm putting the West dead last, even though Mexican food is fantastic in San Diego. Not so much L.A. Now, and then they were trying to argue, like, Midwest is last. I was like, see, we're we, we not doing this. And then they tried to say, well, you know, if, if the whole Midwest is leaning on Chicago's pizza, then they lost. No, that's not all the Midwest has. The Midwest has barbecue. So you got good pizza. You also have good Italian food in the Midwest. So... No, no, no. I'm saying Christopher Reynolds says, Tony, you tripping on yourself. Are you giving diverse food to the South over the East? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said the East is the most diverse. I said that. Where was you at? I'm saying that the South is more diverse than what people think. People think when people think the South, they're they gonna be like soul, soul food, food and just chicken. leave it at All that. Right. Yeah. But I, I was saying that the South has more diversity than that. They got good barbecue down there and they got good. They got uh, great food in New Orleans, which is a combination of different genres coming together in New Orleans. You got the French, you got the seafood coming in. So that's why I was giving it uh, the South more diversity credit than people would initially give them. But the East is the most diverse for sure. And I'm putting the West dead last. I'm ranking, I'm ranking the West seventh out of the four regions. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Yo, look at the, the text I sent you. I'm standing firm in my choice. The West is dead last. I feel that. Wait, is it? How, wait, what number is this? This is 40. So 40% 40 of Americans can trace their lineage to Ellis Island, right? That their great, their ancestors had to come through Ellis Island mm -hmm. in order to be where they are today. So the diversity in the East mm -hmm. makes the most sense right? because it 40% of Americans can trace their lineage right. to Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. Where is Ellis Island? It's in New York. Where, what so number the is East this? Coast. Hold on. Is this? This is, I did the math. I did, I just. This I, is uh, 134 million people. That's, yeah. So that's. Jesus Christ. So that is 40% uh, of the American population. Um, so you're not wrong yeah. in the food being, and then you can literally find they, so not cause I'm biased, but like, you are biased, but I am going. very biased. Keep going. But you can find any kind of food that you're looking for in New York. Yeah. Anything. They say that there's more French restaurants in New York than there is in France. Like, wow. That's hilarious. That's crazy. It's mad funny. But you can find anything. Yeah. Things you're not even, Pakistani restaurants everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
You try to find a Pakistani restaurant out oh, here. Pakistan? Huh? They got restaurants out there? Yeah. Bad boo. Yeah, well, I'm saying like, <laughs> or like Jama- even Jamaican spots. Oh yeah, for sure. Are rare out here. I can't find a Dominican spot to save my life. Yeah, yeah. a they, proper they Italian. Yeah, a proper yeah. Italian spot. Yeah, all of these places that I'm saying I can find Trinidadian. Right. You know what I mean? Throw a throw a dart at a globe. No, not at a globe. At a map. <laughs> yeah. Because if you throw it at the globe, it's coming right. It's bouncing right back off. Right. Um. Anywhere you land, you can find a restaurant. Of that region, somewhere in the East Coast, mm-hmm. you can't do that everywhere. Yeah, you know what I mean. The diversity is so different. So, I agree that the East Coast and so the East Coast definitely has uh, better food because of the options. Right. the The options are there. Sometimes you might want to switch it up. You don't always want soul food. You don't right. want. You don't always want. You know stuff that's going to eventually kill you. <laughs> you know what I mean. Let me pause you real quick because I'm sick of this, Jerome. Shut up. Chicago pizza is not exclusive to deep dish. Oh, that's Sick facts. of this narrative. Chicago pizza is not exclusive to deep dish. Sick of this. We keep I, going. As a New Yorker, I can vouch for that. Uh, Chicago pizza, they have all kinds of pizza. They have their thin crust. And one thing I will give to Chicago over New York mm. is that Chicago uh, is made to order. So she, like that I've noticed. Yeah. There's a lot of made to order pizza spots. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna go in there and just grab a slice and then be out. Right. That's not really a thing for Chicago. So I will give y'all that you guys have fresh diversity in your pizza. It's not just deep dish and your pizza is made differently. Yeah. Then and yeah, it's definitely different. As a New Yorker, I'm proud. You know I'm you know me. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna give y'all your props with yeah. the pizza. It's just different. And uh, it was funny because Keenan Baker, shout out to Keenan Baker, he was arguing that New York has the best pizza. And I was like, well, have you had Chicago pizza? And he hasn't. Oh, He's well, never been he there. Yeah. So I was just like, well, you know, and he was bringing other people's opinions about Chicago pizza in the group. I was like, yo, have you had Chicago pizza? And, you know, and for him to be, be claiming that New York has the best pizza, he was just super critical about the pizza we had when we was out there this year. That's he, true. he he wasn't that impressed. He was like, it was cool, but it was a little too greasy. He had mad critical notes. And I'm just like, if this is supposed to be the best pizza mm-hmm. in the country for you, it's a lot of complaining going on. Yeah. I had one pizza in Chicago. That you loved it. You were obsessed. I sat and ate it while driving. Fact. And I was just like, I miss this so. So that's a dynamic difference in. And that was just one spot I went to. I just went to one location, got me a pizza, and busted a nut. Yeah. And it was just like, but 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 Kenan was like, eh, you know, this. I feel like he finally hit like a good pizza spot for him. We hit that last spot. That last spot. At the end of the weekend after he even had several attempts. Yeah. So that lets you know right now the strength of I told him next time I book Chicago, I'm bringing him purposely. Yeah. yeah. Just so he can see what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, Chicago food, and that's another thing I want to say. Midwest food is a, it, the Midwest, well, Chicago, no, I, I can't talk for the Midwest. Chicago, mm-hmm. you guys are also very diverse in your food. Absolutely. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You can find a lot of stuff. And it's not the same old, same old. One thing I think about California is that they, they're up, like, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but they stick to tradition. And they're obsessed with it. And they're just like, we need another taco spot. No, we don't. (laughs) Right. We need another burger spot. I I promise you we don't. Right. Ramen. Chill. Yeah. And then that's it. (laughs) It's a a, a representation. It's the group of people who are here. That's what I've noticed. It's it's yeah. it's the people who are here. So that that if that's their culture, then they want to expand upon that as they're moving into these different neighborhoods. They want yeah. to keep bringing that with them, which I don't, I have no problem with. Right. But as far as like diversity goes, yeah. I after living in I've been in L.A. for four years now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I lived in Atlanta for like twelve years. Yeah, and I lived in Virginia for like twelve years. Okay, but both Virginia and Atlanta are the South technically, but people yeah. will say Virginia is like the East. Yeah, East for sure has the diversity part down pat. I can sure. get all of that. There, as far as like what I like to taste, I'm leaning south. Wise. Okay, West has definitely been like when I came here, I was just like, I, I'm underwhelmed by what I get 
when I go to a place and right. I hear how much people hype up places and I go and I'm sure. not impressed. Yeah. Whereas when we were on the road and you know, we went to Atlanta, I was like, damn, every yeah. restaurant we went to, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> how are y'all doing this? I had every a phenomenal restaurant. breakfast in Atlanta. At that one place we went to, the restaurant where the line was super long, and we waited in the vans, and then we went in, and they had the gold on the pancakes. Oh, breakfast at Barney's. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I went back. So I, when Fine. I went back to Atlanta, I went back to the places that we had traveled to, because I never had them before. Yeah. I had the best wings of my life at B&L, and even you had cauliflower wings, and even those were good. Yeah. Like, you know, that as far as flavor goes, I'm picking South. Yeah. Diversity for sure to East, because I, I, you can't really beat, just New York alone, you can't really beat that diversity that's in New it's York. It's crazy. There's no city like yeah. that, other than in my eyes, after being in Chicago, I was like, this feels similar to what New York would be in a different spot. Exactly. Yeah. And because, I feel like Chicago has diversity as well. Because Chicago has, what, what people don't realize about Chicago, they, they just think it's black and white. And when they say white, they just mean regular old American, you know, white. Mm -hmm. But what, what they don't consider is... Uh, Chicago historically has a strong Italian population, strong Polish population, Irish. So you you getting all these people from different regions of the world, even though you might look at them, oh, this is a white guy. You have Greek, Irish, Polish, and they're coming in with these these uh, restaurants and recipes. So you're getting you getting different takes on these different foods from different regions, and and you're getting the soul food, and you're getting the the pizzas and all this other stuff. And you're getting the Asian community coming in. You get the Filipino uh, community coming in, Chinese, Korean. Mm -hmm. All of this is coming because Chicago is, even though it's a segregated city, it's still culturally diverse within that. And so you're getting these different dynamics within Chicago. And, you know, Chicago's pretty much spearheads the, um, you know, the Midwest as far as, you know, yeah. what's going on. And New York, New York food is I I would say is more diverse than Chicago. For one, there's way more people in New way York. more people. <laughs> New York Thanks. is the biggest city, one of the biggest cities in the world. So of course, Chicago isn't going to stack up against yeah. New York. And that's funny because LA has more people than Chicago. As right, well. exactly. But I would never say LA has better food. Absolutely not. And the diversity no, here is not what people think either. It's, absolutely not. It, it's just in general, like get, being here and right. just being like, okay, it you know it's. It's not diverse. Right. And that, and I think that reflects in the food. Not saying that it's mm -hmm. bad. It's just that the diversity is not here for right. sure. Right. And Absolutely. let me also say, as a vegan, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to my other vegans right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of vegans be like, Oh my God, you're so lucky you oh, live, yeah, in live in LA. Mm -hmm. There's so many options. Listen, there's not a lot of good options though. Right. <laughs> there's a lot of a lot options. Of options man. But, but not a lot they of good don't options. Be flavor like, food no, for some reason. and New York has the best vegan food ever. The best vegan food. And then second comes Atlanta. I'll say Atlanta. They bring in and a slutty then, vegan in New York, though. So I don't like slutty vegan. Really? Slutty vegan Did you like slutty vegan? Not yes. in my list. I had slutty vegan, and I eat meat. And I was like, damn. Slutty vegan is great. Shit was, nah. That shit was But great. she's not a burger person. Man, I'm so sick of burgers. I, not a burger I had a chicken sandwich. I'm not a burger guy either. Oh, try oh, you the tried the chicken, chicken sandwich? sandwich? I'll try it. Yeah, she's not a burger. The fries with the strawberry lemonade. That's me. It's good food meat. in Atlanta. And then New Orleans have really good vegan oh, food. Oh, New Orleans is... I, oh, I'm man. Just, I'm just talking vegan. I've never like, been to New Orleans. Man, New Orleans is spiritual. Yeah, New Orleans. I like New Orleans. New Orleans is spiritual. And then Vegas got good vegan food, too. Yeah, I'll give it to them. Cause, I, cause I had good African food. In Vegas. When me and her first got together, and she was taking me to like different spots in LA to eat vegan food. And remember how disappointed I was most of the time? Man, yeah, and I got and it. I, and I could, you know, I could see that she was kind of disappointed the way she would be looking at but me I and like responding. I was just like, I'm not really feeling this. She was just like, man, you know what I'm saying? And I, you probably subconsciously thought I was just knocking vegan food as a whole, but it, it was just the caliber of vegan options that we were going to in LA. Yeah. And I was just like, man, I'm not really feeling this right yeah. here. It's Especially always, in the crucial time when you're making that transition. Yeah, you need something good. Yeah, so it's like, man, I'm going back. It's you, bad. In one the, false move, you're out of here. Yeah. But for me, going back to meat was never an option. But going back mm. to real cheese, that was always an option. And <laughs> eggs. So one false move, I'm be like, look, I'm not eating I had meat. enough. Because yeah. that has to do with me personally not wanting to eat animals anymore. But, you know what I'm saying? But mm. I, I kept you there because I cooked. <laughs> that that was the key. Like you yeah, cooking, cooking was the key. But us going out and she'd be like, yo, I think that is the, this. as like, far as if you want to go full vegan, you're gonna have to fucking cook. Yeah, you got you to like you to have cook. to cook you something. Got to. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're gonna be disappointed by the options that are out here. Hell yeah. The options the thing is, LA got the options. Numbers Absolutely. wise, it has the options. It Absolutely. don't got the goddamn taste. That yeah. is don't that's the, the thing that is missing. 
The Mexican yep. food I have had here has been phenomenal. I'm not going to shit on it. I've had it in it's San Diego. It's some good Mexican food. San Diego is all this stuff like that. Top I, tier. San Diego, San Francisco. San Francisco Asian food is San really Francisco good. got good food. San Francisco got no, good food. No, San Francisco is another spot that has really good. You know what? San Francisco got San good Francisco food. Yeah. San Francisco might be number two. Oakland. San Francisco has good food. I do not want to shit on San Francisco whatsoever. San Francisco has better food than L.A., 100%. As a matter of fact, but the I Bay think, Area is yeah, number Bay Area two. is probably because it's more area. diverse. There's more diverse up there. Yep. So the Bay Area is clutch when it comes to the West as a region, food-wise. Yes. Clutch. If they just had to depend on L.A. Oh, my God. He'd be like, San Diego, help. Right. Because L.A. ain't hidden. L.A. is not a food city. And everybody knows this. But people still say it is. I know somebody It's a food with you. city in terms of Brennan. That's because they probably... Oh. <laughs> Brennan don't know. Brennan life. will argue with that. LA is a food city. Brennan says that. I I believe so. I think I don't want to put words in the group chat. But I think I, I'm pretty sure he was. And Brennan is well traveled, so that's surprising coming from him. Because yeah. I was like, it's not. But then no. of course I'm the picky eater, so I don't get a you know. Yeah, is that? Um, but yeah, so it's New York first for the vegan options, and then Bay Area second. Bay Area yeah. is phenomenal. Shout out to the Bay Area. When I put the West last. I don't want to disrespect what y'all are doing, but you know what I'm saying? I misread your question again. Let's try it again. I know Chicago has way more variety and deep dish ain't even what y'all eat for real. What food would you choose to represent Chicago instead? (laughs) Pizza. (laughs) Pizza. Pizza. And if you, if you want to take, if you want to take pizza off the table, um, then you go Polish sausages. You go the Italian beef uh, sandwiches. Then them not really sandwiches, but the Italian beef with the wet bun is something Chicago is known for. They're known for great uh, uh, roast beef sandwiches as well. So you got the Italian beef, the roast beef sandwiches, the Italian sausages. Those are popular in Chicago. If you go to a place called Portillo's. Oh yeah. Um, they're super famous out of Chicago. They matter of fact, they have a Portillo's out here in Buena Park. I've heard of that. Yeah, super good, super good. And they got um, and Chicago is also known for hot dogs and, and how they make the hot dogs extravagant. They cut they cut the tomatoes. They got the pepper buns. Um, so Chicago is known for other stuff outside of pizza as well. And Harold's Chicken is legend. And. Chicago is the originator and home of the jibarito. You ever had a jibarito? Mm, what's that? So it's a sandwich, Puerto uh-huh. Rican sandwich, but instead of bread, they use tostones. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Never never knew. Yeah. It's mad good. Never knew. Mad and good. Chicago has a big Puerto Rican population there. Man, when we drove the, through that block, it through was, that, that neighborhood, yeah. I was like, I like this. Yeah. That's so crazy that that, like... Northern cities have such a big population of like Puerto Rican, Dominican. Like that shit is crazy because it's so it seems like it's so far away. So right. you just be like, right? You know, you just miss it. Like you think, oh, we made it all the way up to New York. Like how, the f-? you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why our dumbasses keep stopping in cold ass places, but we do it. <laughs> oh, what was that question you had for me? Oh, okay. So my question is, and this is for everyone. This is going back to the Jay Z thing, right, and the Beyonce thing. For those who may have thought that because Jay-Z is with Beyonce, we automatically know who Jay-Z is because we know Beyonce. Taylor Swift Taylor Swift is one of the biggest people right now, right? Mm-hmm. Who is she dating? Who is she dating now? Who has she been dating since 2016? Uh, what's his name? Well, I know she was dating Loki Ooh. for a while. I don't know if they broke up. So Are you they still together? You can't name who she's dating right now? Loki. You said Taylor Swift? Taylor Swift. Oh, I have no idea. Can anyone name who Taylor Swift is dating? No, because we don't care about Taylor Swift. That's so like popularity and like personal life, it doesn't always align. Who's she dating? This dude named Joe. He's an actor. I don't even Well, know. he's not I even a, a star. No, he is a star. He's in movies. But I'm saying What's his like, last name? Joe Owlin. But what I'm saying is like No, it's different. Nah, her you, popularity. You, you can't come with somebody that's not famous though. But I'm saying she's famous enough that we should know who she's dating. Like, if you really think about That's it. That's like asking me who Julia Roberts' husband is. He's not he's not famous. Julia Roberts is not Taylor Swift, though. But she, but she's a star. What I'm saying is she's a star. So when I did know who Taylor Swift was dating, it was Loki. Because okay. he was a star. So it was just like, oh, shit. Because they, you know they look good together. But now, 
Taylor I see. What, Swift. I, I get Tony's point because yeah, if Taylor Swift isn't dating anybody, that's like, I guess they have to be damn near same level. So Beyonce, Jay Z, like in the that's realm of the culture, they're damn near the same level. Joe, because if 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 Beyonce was Alwin? dating a regular dude, we had no Joe idea. Biden. She's dating Joe Alwyn. Like who's the who's the who's the most known like actress right now? Actress, actress, Who? actor, actress, either one. We're going uh, male, or female. It doesn't matter. Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know who the hell he's dating. Oh either. yeah, he, he be a switching child. up a lot. Now. Yeah, they get past twenty five, then they, hey man, yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't be sticking. Yeah, that's that's like, different. Like when you ask who people are married to, then it becomes a little different. Yeah. Well, well, okay, married to, I guess. Yeah. I'm thinking who's the big, who's big actor, actress? Because I know Scarlett Johansson to. is married to the dude from SNL. That does the uh, the reports with uh, Michael Che, mm. that guy. Um, and then who else is a big star that's married? But I think the thing is, is that Taylor Swift fans probably know. They probably know that shit right off the. Oh yeah, man. He's in this. He's in this movie. He's in that movie. Like, bro, ain't nobody care about this movie. This dude right here got sixteen acting credits. And I ain't <laughs> souvenir part two <laughs> Christmas care. Oh, he was in Harriet. Okay, Harriet. he's not. He's not a star. Yeah, I just think I don't know. My point was that, like, if you if you take somebody that's super big and they're dating a legend in their field, we're gonna know. Okay, you got that. Yeah, because because um, I remember when when they were dating each other, her and uh, Tom Hiddleston. I was just like, those two. It was. He seemed old. Yeah, it surprised me. But she old. She's older than she looks. Yeah. She yeah. looks she like, looks a, like kid a kid in her 30s. to me. But she's a grown woman. But she just looks like the kids. She do. And uh, like Selena Gomez. Yeah. Yep. Like J Lo and Ben Affleck. Like you know they're married. Like you know their every move now. It's like you know what I'm saying. You know who J Lo was married to before. Oh. And you know it's just like oh okay now we're going. Well, Angela Bassett in. Courtney Vance, I feel like a lot of people know Angela Bassett, but it's not an automatically Courtney Vance mindset. They've been together for a while, and they've been then they've been together for yeah a long time. But you don't automatically. Like I would know that but, simply because I just know and I yeah. know who he is. I know they've been together, but um, Terry Vaughn and then her husband is Terry Vaughn huge though. I don't know. Oh, who this that is very, She she was from uh, the Steve Harvey show. Um, which character? Because I did watch that a little bit. She was she was the the secretary. She had that funny way of speaking. I have. To, she was uh, dating Cedric. Oh oh oh! oh, yeah. oh she was what? also in Don't Be a Menace and stuff like that. Yeah, she's okay. definitely not big. Mm. Yeah, but Angela talking, Bassett is talking big names. Angela Bassett is a big name. Yeah, but for sure. Courtney B. Vance. People aren't going to automatically know that they're together. How big Beyonce no. is, is, I typed it in on here to keep notes, and it corrected the E every time. Autocorrect corrects the E on Beyonce's name every time. Oh, yeah. That's oh, how big Beyonce shit. is. Yeah. yeah. That's I've not a joke. That. They don't, they, they, most of the time, you're not gonna, they're not going to let you print, like spell it out wrong. It literally right. put the accent over the E on her name. Will they, yeah. will they give you the automatic dash with Jay-Z? No. Put, he, does put he Jay-Z it? in without the dash. I did. It, there's a space. <laughs> <laughs> there's a space. <laughs> Beyonce is like one of the only names I know that they, they'll do that. Sometimes they'll capitalize it, but yeah. her name has a special accent. They're like, we fuck with Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. Beyonce. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. Now you mean this. Right. If autocorrect is correcting you, like man, right. come correct. <laughs> Get it right. That's crazy. I still think Giselle is bigger than Tom Brady, though. But let's wrap oh, it up. Oh, they 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 ding me for Jay Z. I put Jay Z with no dash. They gave me the But do it's you wrong. Oh, the scribble? Yeah, yeah. It's wrong. And then because it's not a word. Then That's I put Jay Z. Put it with a dash. I put it with a dash. It's, it's letting it's me do it. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> Whoever came up with those genius to me. That's funny. Uh, we got to get the hell up out of here. This is the longest verbal cardio of all time. Because y'all been in here socking me out, proving me wrong on the <laughs> Jay-Z and Beyonce thing. <laughs> Opening my eyes to good points. Um, is there anything I need to wrap up? Uh... 
Join the Patreon and also join him on Twitch. Please join the Patreon. Join my Patreon, man. Get in on this. Get in on these episodes early. Get in on the movie nights we be having. We be having a good time. Movie nights are a great time. And I don't want y'all to miss out. So pull up on that. Um, also, let me know in the comment section who you think is bigger worldwide, Tom Brady or Giselle. And the question is not if Giselle needs Tom Brady. The question is... Who's more popular worldwide? Who's more known? Um, let me know who you think in the comment section below. And if you have some articles, if you have some proof Source. to back you up, uh, which is something we didn't have in this episode, we just opinion base. Let us know in the comment section. Post those things, and we'll see what it is. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to my patron saints for being in here. Um, I love y'all passionately in the shower and all that good stuff. And also, I want to know your favorite mafia-related movie. Oh, yes. Tell also, me. I'm going to be doing movie nights often as well, but I'm going to call them little slumber party nights where we watch different shows that are like, that stuff that Tony doesn't really tap into, um, I will. So like really popular stuff that's like trending or whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop on it. Because a lot of that stuff isn't really up Tony's alley. But I will do it. Uh, you can subscribe on my Instagram and join in on the fun. Get in on this. All right, y'all. Uh, stay tuned for Gross Point Bake. I'm doing the top 10 highest grossing mob movies of all time. Well, not of all time. From the 70s on up. Because if I dip back, I got to do the research on how much public enemy made back in the 30s i ain't doing all that man you know what i'm saying top grossing mob movies outside of the godfather is next on gross point bake all right y'all we out